What is up, guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be giving you guys the seven things that God hates according to the Bible. Yeah, you guys are not going to want to miss this video. You got to stick around for this entire thing. This will shock you. This will be absolutely life-changing, and I pray that none of you guys are living in these seven things. So here we go, guys. Let's get straight into this one. Now, guys, not a lot of people know about this, but the Bible actually mentions seven things. It says six things, but seven are an abomination to God. These seven things God absolutely hates. Now, I'm not saying that there is only seven things that God hates, but for some reason, it specifically highlights these seven things inside of the Bible. It starts off right here in Proverbs chapter uh, 6, verse, and it goes uh, verse 16 through 19. But let's start this off. It says, These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. So let's get straight into the meat of these messages, guys. Let's go over each and every one of these seven things that God hates. All right, guys. So number one, it says right here, a proud look. Oh, what's a proud look? Um, a proud look really is going to symbolize here someone who is operating and living in a prideful lifestyle. The Lord cannot stand the proud look of those who think you know they got it all together, those who think they don't need to rely on God, they don't need to rely on correction or anything else. They got it all handled. People who are living in a lifestyle of pride are the ones giving those proud looks, if you know what I'm saying. God hates pride, guys. He can't stand pride. Pride was the reason the devil fell from heaven. He thought he could be like God. He thought he could ascend above God, but surely he was wrong. And the Bible says, those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. So God cannot stand those who are operating um, in pride, those who are given those prideful looks, who are arrogant and confident in themselves rather than relying and trusting and being confident in God and His Spirit. Number two, a lying tongue. God cannot stand a lying tongue. He hates lies. God only speaks truth. He is completely faithful. And the Bible actually says the devil is the father of lies. So when you are lying, you are speaking the devil's native language. God cannot stand dishonesty. In fact, the Bible even mentions um, don't swear by this, don't swear by that. It, you can't. You shouldn't be saying anything to heavily emphasize your answer to someone other than yes and no. Because there is a chance, because you're not God, you're not fully faithful, there is a chance that you could not keep your word. And God wants us to do everything possible to not lie. I mean, this could even mean over-exaggerating over something. Or even just being dishonest, which is not telling the full truth. God wants us to abstain from every form of lying. Lying is not of God. Lying is of the devil. God hates those who live in lies. And number three, it says, God hates those who shed innocent blood. Now, what does this mean? For an example, um, people who claim to know the truth, to understand um, the truth, people like false prophets or whoever, but lead innocent people away. People, uh, I, could, I know a great example, lukewarm people for an example. Those who love God's grace, but not his face. Those who say they love Jesus, but they false represent who Jesus is. They're living a worldly, evil, sinful lifestyle. And we got all these innocent people, these people who actually care about God. But then when they see the way lukewarm Christians act, it makes them want to vomit. And it actually, instead of leading people to God, it leads them further away from him. And what's happening is they are shedding innocent blood. Another example, Paul says after he preached the gospel, after he preached the gospel to, I believe it was the uh, Corinth. Maybe not. It could have been uh, the church of Thessaloniki, uh, whichever church, but it, it mentioned, or whichever congregation, but it, it mentions in the Bible, Paul literally saying, Will your blood be on your own hands? Because he preached the gospel. So when you withhold knowing the truth at times, and I know this is going to be hard to hear, guys, but when you withhold from preaching the gospel, withhold 
telling other people the truth, who are desperate, who are in need, who are in help. You withhold the power and capability God has given inside of you instead of making a difference. You withhold that. You are shedding innocent blood. Their blood is on your hands. It also could be meaning false prophets, all sorts of wicked people, um, even governments, government officials. It can mean anybody who deliberately lead the innocent people astray, even people who murder the innocent. I mean, it could really come down to anything. Let's think about people, for example, who are disabled, people with a special needs like Down syndrome or people who have autism or whatever. There are a lot of people with a Marxist um, mindset where they think that these people are worthless, these people are meaningless, these people shouldn't be inside of the world. They're only um, they're only preventing humanity from reaching its fullest potential, which is basically like Marxism. These people who want to kill people with um, special needs are killing the innocent. Um, another example: um, those who kill those who kill babies or support the word. You know the word. I can't say. It. I don't want to get flagged or anything like that. But the people who kill the lives of the innocent babies inside of the womb. These people are uh, deliberately shedding innocent blood. These babies that are inside the womb, guys, they don't have a voice for themselves. They don't even know um, what it's like to breathe outside the womb. They're completely in the hands of whoever is carrying them. It's not their fault if someone were to get abused or someone were to um, get pregnant or some bad situation were to come of it, ultimately it's not their fault and they deserve the chance to speak on their, or to, to, to have life. They deserve the chance to have an opportunity to experience and get to know God as they grow up. But the sad thing is um, people ultimately sacrifice and shed innocent blood because they are selfish and they don't want to deal with the consequences of raising children. It can be anything, any situation, guys. There's no excuse for it. Number four, it says, God hates those with a heart that devises evil plans. So God hates a heart that devises evil plans, which means those who have evil intentions behind the actions that they do their plans, their mindset, what they want to accomplish, or that they want to achieve is actually wickedness coming from their heart. Those who are just in it for, for themselves, those who are in it to get rich, even it could be pastors, people who um, have their own mindset, their own goal, who prevent the power of the Holy Spirit um, for, from being made known and, and manifesting inside of the body, people with their own wicked plans. It doesn't have to be some evil outsider, some crazy assassin or person out there somewhere. It doesn't have to be just someone radical like that, guys. There are so many people that come off so righteous, so holy, so perfect, so great and awesome, but really their heart intentions, their plans are evil. So God despises those with an evil heart plan or a heart that, that devises evil plans. It stirs up, up chaos for no reason. And number five, it says feet that are swift to running into evil. So feet that run to evil quickly. Let me explain this. For an example, someone who um, has a temptation for say, maybe you are struggling with um, some sort of pornography addiction or something like that. But instead of thinking about it, considering um, your creator, instead of considering um, that God is watching you, instead of considering that you are grieving the Holy Spirit, inside of you, instead of considering that Jesus died to set you free from this, not so you continue to live this lifestyle. Instead of that, instead of trying to think about all that, you quickly run into the sin. You quickly go after it before you can really get in your own mind so that you will do the wickedness in the sight of the Lord. It can be anything. Now, that's just one example. It can be somebody who... Um, Somebody who uh, quickly qu is quick to start drama, who is quick to um, gossip about someone, who is quick to um, fall into fornication, who is quick to uh, cuss somebody out, who doesn't think and consider uh, the, 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 the plan and, and purpose of God and what they do. They are just quick into doing evil. Number six, it says, God hates 
a, a false witness that tells lies right here. A false witness who speaks lies. God cannot stand this man. I can feel this, guys. God cannot stand those who claim to have the truth, who claim to have experienced this and that, who claim all this and all that, who actually instead lead people astray with lies, who claim that they've experienced this, that they've gone through this, that they've um, had to deal with this, but in reality, they haven't had to go through or deal with any of that. They're just saying that to manipulate you for their own purpose, their own wicked agenda. God cannot stand those who are a, a, a false witness, those who speak lies. And finally, guys, number seven, God hates one who sows discord among the brethren. This means that God hates those who purposefully are stirring up evil, those who are quick and swift to start drama. Instead of trying to make peace, they try to make division. God cannot stand those who try to start war, those who are constantly trying to start drama, those who are trying to lead other people into falling into sin, those who have a wicked intention and desire to uh, cause chaos, to cause war, to cause all sorts of demonic drama and unnecessary type of division that is not of God whatsoever. The Lord desires for us to be peacemakers. Instead of walking to room, instead of uh, trying to turn other people against each other, instead of gossiping and telling lies and being like one of these people, God wants us to uh, stir up peace, to speak truth, to speak love, to fight on behalf of others, not tear them down, not start war and chaos and drama. God wants us to end the drama, to end the chaos, to end all the division. Yes, there is a time, guys, because Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. When he said that, though, he was talking about the big picture. He was going to destroy the works of darkness. But again, this is what I'm trying to tell you guys is that his fight was not against flesh and blood. He came here for flesh and blood. He came to die for other people. His fight was for us, not against us. But when he says he came to bring a sword, he came to bring division ultimately against the devil. The only division we should be causing, guys, is the division against the devil, against religion, against the demonic uh, strategy of darkness. And often there are people who are operating in uh, that type of stuff, who are purposefully um, coming against the move of God. Sometimes we do need to stand up. We do need to uh, start war, but it is only necessary if we are fighting on behalf of others and for God against the wiles of the devil. All right, guys, that is it for this video. I hope this video has helped you out. If you want to support the ministry on here, do not forget to subscribe, like, uh, share this to a few of your friends so they can hear the truth of this one as well. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments about this one. Go check out my store. This shirt says Spiritual Warrior. It's a fire shirt. The link will be in the description. Check out my store. We're coming out with all sorts of new products, guys. Devil tries to get us to clothe, clothe ourselves in all sorts of wickedness. I say let's clothe ourselves in Christ. Amen. And with that being said, you all have a great rest of your day. And God bless you. Thank you.